Good morning everyone, it's uh, 8.59 here and you better hold your breath because uh, we're about to discover whether um, Kirsten is up for a 12 hour time penalty or not. Uh, we switched on this morning, uh, 8 o'clock or so, and uh, realised that uh, uh, Kirsten is right on the zone and uh, the new position will decide what happens here. And just to explain, we're not obligated to tell entrants that they're close to the zone, whatever, we, we make an arbitrary decision on that. And yesterday afternoon when uh, uh, when we looked, she'd turned away uh, just after about one o'clock or so. Uh, the last four hours she was heading in a northeasterly direction. And that's the last time I looked, certainly, and none of the other team did as well. And then we switched on this morning and she is right on top of the zone. So in a minute, uh, you'll see what the outcome is. Anyway, the thing that we do do is when someone crosses the zone, we let them know and uh, we just sent, a, sent her a message uh, 10, 15 minutes ago, so you better head north. We, uh, at the four o'clock position, you're just uh, right on top of the zone, hadn't crossed it, and uh, let's hope that she's not there, because if she is, uh, it's a pretty severe time penalty and uh, uh, not much fun. So uh, let's see where we are here. So it's about to roll over, but you can see she turned away here and we saw that just around midday or something yesterday and then I hadn't looked at the tracker at all. And uh, since then she's had, uh, you know, three, four positions going down, 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 down. And uh, this is the four o'clock position, five o'clock local time here. And she's, uh, when you blow that up, she's right, hasn't crossed, but she's right on the, on the line and making seven knots. So if she hadn't turned straight away, uh, she's in the zone but we use an arbitrary situation where if she had have gone in for some time and then came out for a couple of hours and she's up here somewhere we don't actually count the course that we can't see so it actually goes from position to position and uh, it's due to roll over in about one minute um, and we'll uh, we'll get an answer so the uh, as I mentioned many times before uh, this has never been mentioned to any of the entrants about uh, giving them advice on their position at any briefing before it's not in the sailing instructions it's something that we are not obligated to do but we actually uh, can if we decide to do it and part of the reason it's not an obligation and we never mention it to the entrants is that uh, we don't know whether we you know we're not watching the tracker 24 hours a day every hour every 20 minutes and things like that and they're playing a game, you know, they, they entrance run the line and they've got to think of this as a beach or a, a cliff full of rocks. And if that was the case, I'm sure they wouldn't be even tempting to get too close. So uh, they have to be aware of their position as if that's a, a, a country or something. It's not just a, a penalty zone. It, it's a, a navigational hazard that they've got to stay away from. And uh, uh, when you get close to it, you run the risk of... Uh, that happening and also the wind at the moment is not actually blowing her into the zone it's actually blowing her away from the zone so uh, she makes her own risk assessment on that uh, based on the decisions that um, uh, she needs to make Oof, far out <laughs> there we go <laughs> okay uh, I'm happy about that anyway so uh, she bounced the line but she actually didn't cross it and uh, she's outside the zone uh, so that's uh, whew. I was not looking forward to declaring that penalty, I've got to tell you. So let's just see how far she is at the moment. Um, uh, okay, so uh, here we go. That's right on the edge there. That's on the back of her boat. She's 2.47 nautical miles off the zone, but at least she's heading in the right direction. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, oh, we've got a bit of... Um, Got so much orange there, we're getting a bit of uh, vignette on the screen. Anyway, that's good news. So uh, Kirsten will be happy about that. Um, and uh, we'll send her another message and say, you just bounced off the zone. Very good tactical move. Boy, she's quite a sailor. She worked that <laughs> the line. Um, anyway, part of the course. So uh, we'll just um, get rid of that for now. And I'll show you what everyone else is doing. It's quite interesting. Um, and uh, yeah. That's uh, a bit of a scare for Kirsten, but she probably didn't even know it. Um, so that's kind of cool. Keep coming back here. Uh, and I'll, show, I'll explain a couple of things on this. First of all, let me just show you, for instance, um, okay, so we've got the wind. We'll get rid of that. We'll put the snail trails on here. And uh, where are we going here? One more. Why can't I see that? There we go. See this blue line? Guess who that is? That is uh, Jean-Luc. That's where he went during the 2018 race. 
and that was close enough for him because it gave him latitude on what to do. Uh, the fleet this time is running the, running the gauntlet right along the edge there, and that's a good choice because the weather is uh, uh, different this season. If you want to get the wind, then um, that's where you need to be. But if we look at uh, Captain Goog right now, he's that's about that's probably about 30 miles from the line. We haven't said anything to him because we know he knows where he is right now, and he's being blown away from the line, so he's decided to hold at 30 miles from the no-go zone. Uh, Jeremy's on less than that. He's probably 25 miles from the zone. Uh, here he's got a light wind from the north, but he's going to be challenged later because if this comes over uh, and he's got northerly winds, you don't want to be sitting 20 miles, 20, let's see what it looks like is about 20, uh, 25 miles from the, from the line, 20 miles or something like that. Uh, it's not where you want to be with a northerly, especially when it starts to pick up. Uh, 26 miles, so he's 26 miles from a, a, a hard rocky beach and he's got to sleep and the wind's from the north. Uh, so it's they know absolutely what they're doing and uh, it's part of the game so uh, we're not obligated to in that instance you know I'm not I don't feel obligated to tell Jeremy what's going on and I don't feel the same with Captain Goog either you know they they know what they're doing and, and they've had plenty of time to get sights let's just look at the clouds for instance for the moment but with that that zone there uh, you know with no wind they should be okay to see where they are you know so uh, uh, and certainly uh, once it goes north you want to start getting out of there so we'll uh, we'll just see how that pans out so but they've got plenty of clouds at the moment and uh, this is uh, uh, going to be interesting to see what goes on so I'll go back here and come to today's weather oh the weather just updated as well so now yeah Jeremy's got um, a bit of breeze there from the north why did that go that way let me see here. I just want to make sure it's gone all the way back. Sometimes the internet's a bit slow and it doesn't catch up because so, that was definitely a change of wind just then. And it could be that the new um, update of weather at the back of the tracker uh, has just jumped in, kicked in. So he's in, um, you know, it's 30 knots, uh, gusting 35, you know, something like that. And um, he's under pressure now, getting pushed down to the line. But that was... Uh, his choice because you could see before he had plenty of calm wind he could have gone up there and uh, Goog should be getting off the line as well now you know he's he's uh, if this comes over let's just see what's going to happen here while we're talking weather and lines and stuff um, what's going on yeah okay so Goog will cop it uh, tomorrow early hours of the morning not quite 24 hours from now he'll have strong northerlies as well Jeremy will, it rolls over behind this wind it rolls over to a southwesterly that'll blow him away from the line um, and uh, all is kind of cool. Anyway, I'll I'll come back to that. Um, we'll just go to the back end of the fleet now. Get rid of the all these snail trails. Uh, just use the little ones. And uh, where's our Nord? Our Nord's still making progress north in light winds, 3.8 knots. He'd be enjoying the ride. And guys now, well and truly, um, looking towards Cape Town, four knots. Uh, still a reasonable distance. So it'll still be the end of the week before he gets there. Um, Elliot is uh, on a roll here, 6.2 knots, and this wind has obviously just kicked in because he wouldn't be doing 6.2 knots into this headwind if that was the case right now. Um, so, oh, here we go. That's a bit of a furphy. That's better. <laughs> so now I'm back on the real-time weather today. So that's why he's doing 6.2 knots. He's got a following breeze and making the most of it. Ian's doing the same. He's uh, heading due east virtually, a little bit north of east, but heading towards Hobart, so that's good. Um, and Elliot could actually, he's trying to get south obviously because he could go to the east, but he's trying to get south. He'll be on 40 soon, and that's a good place to be even with this, this weather patterns. So um, let's just roll this weather through now. I'll animate this and see what's gonna happen. So now the internet is a bit slow maybe, or maybe it's me. Yep, here we go, every hour. So this is uh, midday, the weather's mo system's moving pretty fast, so it's going to go over the top of Ian, he's going to get a big ride, and then Ian will be happy because it goes southwest, uh, not dramatically, so the sea will be reasonable and uh, making good time. Elliot should hold that breeze, and then it'll go southwest, southerly, so it's going to go southerly, but that's going to turn on him. We saw the same thing yesterday. Wow, this is big, So, uh, but it's below them all. That's encouraging. There's some big winds and big seas there. So uh, this is tomorrow afternoon. 
Um, then Ian's going to go quiet again. But at least he's not the wrong side of it. Elliot is, but when he gets that, you know, he'll be able to head south. Once it comes from the east, he'll he'll head south, and then as it moves away, he'll get underneath it and should be able to keep sailing. So that's not so bad for them. And down here with Jeremy and, and Goog, it's pretty much as we saw just a minute ago. Um, it's some northerlies, but then it's going to go from southwest and settle in. So that'll keep them moving pretty well. Um, that will be pretty cool. So Jeremy today, right now, on today's weather is 8.4 knots. Wow, he, not Jeremy, Ian Herbert Jones is 8.4 knots. I'd say he's in a current. So let's just have a look. I'm a bit all over the place there just to make sure it's not wind against. Thing I know he's had this little hook here. I'll blow that up so you can see it. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'd say uh, Ian's hooked onto some of this and that's kicked him along quite nicely, uh, 8.4 knots, and it's sort of uh, uh, heading in a similar direction to the wind, so might, the waves might be getting a bit funny, but it's pretty reasonable. Uh, no currents here for Jeremy. He missed that. He cut that one. He's gone across. And Captain Goog, pretty much just as, as per usual sailing conditions in the ocean, back to the wind. Um, okay, so uh, the, everyone's pretty settled for the next few days anyway. We'll just do a quick overview here. Um, so Goog is making 5.4 knots now. Jeremy's 7 knots, so he's happy with that. Abolish uh, got a great breeze there, doing 6.7 knots, uh, having a bit of fun. Kirsten's bounced out, which is good. There, ceased, uh, let's go to Simon now. Um, he's got a fair bit of breeze that's just on the edge, so 7.1 knots. And we'll just look at their waves because that's pretty big. Yeah, that's in fives and sixes there for Simon, but he's handling it all good at the moment. Kirsten's similar. That sort of range is about five knots, uh, five uh, metres. Uh, you know, maybe gusting a bit, maybe building a little bit more. Same with Avalish, five metres, real southern ocean conditions. Good sea state's going to be increasing slowly uh, and following those heavier breezes coming through. So uh, generally speaking, everyone's looking pretty happy. The big picture now, um, let's just see what that looks like. So we go forward a day quickly. Um, okay, nothing exciting happening there. One day in two days in um, no it's all looking very good up here all the way through uh, then we go that's the ninth so into the tenth now this time in the tenth um, all pretty good this is really really cool to see this you know <laughs> what we were going through in 2018 was completely different there was gales and storms quite severe all over the place and everything's down here around the 50s and so uh, that's uh, touch wood looking good for a while so that's the 11th that's uh, four days ahead uh trying to look at get a feel for simon he's going to keep moving but i think it'll be average i'm still predicting 20th will be about him but into hobart but we'll just have to wait and see um and the good news kirsten didn't lose any time with a time penalty so uh, he's, she's still holding position there and uh, i'm waffling on a bit here but let's just uh, have a look at the distances uh, with kirsten and uh, simon just to see what's happening. Uh, oh, wrong one. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Ooh, jeepers, she's lost out again. I'll go bow to bow on this. Yeah, she lost out another 30 miles. So currently 760 nautical miles from uh, from Simon. And uh, that's, that's quite a jump. So... Um, We'll have to see how it pans out. Anyway, that's it for today, and uh, whew, uh, breathe easy for Kirsten. See you.